The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Jess Navarro, joined here at the Star in Frisco by Aisha Morrison, our girl Haley Sutton out in Oxnard, California, where, Haley, it looks like you got some rain from what I was seeing. That hasn't happened in years, actually, from the time training camp has been going on. So how has the weather been, first of all, for you in Oxnard? I'm trying not to complain uh, because honestly, it's been very nice and I haven't like I didn't physically see the rain. I just woke up and saw that it had rained. Um, but honestly, it's been pretty hot. Like at practice, there's no circulation and Jesse you would know this, but there's no circulation out on the field. So even though it's only like 75, 80 degrees, it's stifling because there's no wind. Um, or there is, it's weird. I don't know how to, I need, we should talk to a meteorologist about it because I don't know how to describe it, but today's nice. It's very chilly. I've got my little pullover on, my little sweatpants. So it's a good start to the morning. We love that. And we're living through that cooler weather for you because back here at home, you're not missing much. It is like 106 consistently. Like a blow dryer. It's not changing anytime soon. So enjoy that cool weather for us. Like a blow dryer. Yeah, I feel <laughs> That's like a blow dryer. Like. Walk it, outside. It was a little breezy yesterday. Fight. Yeah. It, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. But uh, all that to say, we are officially in preseason preparation. The Dallas Cowboys playing the Jacksonville Jaguars on Saturday. Ladies, I cannot believe it's already preseason, but there has been plenty of things to come out of this week. Haley, I'm going to throw this to you because during the last padded practice, there were some injury concerns uh, that I just want to make sure we clear up and address going into our preseason talk, that being mostly Mozzie Smith, Tyler Biotish, and then David Durden. What do you know about all of their situations and where they're at? I think Mozzie's fine. He had a precautionary MRI done. They've just diagnosed it as to what's being called tendinitis. I think it's mostly just precautionary. Um, when you have these big guys out here, especially for the rooks, you know, just getting their bodies adjusted to playing NFL snaps every day. Uh, precautionary. I, I had a chance to catch up with Mozzie a little bit yesterday, just off to the side at lunch. Uh, and I asked him, you know, are you good? And he gave you that signature little Mozzie smile, and he's like, I'm good. <laughs> so uh, not too many concerns about Mozzie. I would not be surprised if his snaps were limited on Saturday just because of the expectations that he's supposed to have for the rest of the season. Uh, but I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. As far as Tyler Biotish goes, uh, he left practice uh, with an ankle injury. Uh, I believe he got rolled up in a tackle um, in some seven-on-seven -seven drills that they were doing. He left practice. He came back and tried to get back into the mix um, before they finally just, you know, said, take the day off. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't actually at walkthrough yesterday. I was shooting some stuff, so I wasn't able to see if he did anything at the walkthrough. Um, but again, another precautionary thing. And, and with Tyler Biotis, too, you have to remember this is the second time now where he's had an ankle injury, had that high ankle sprain last year uh, against the Titans. So probably just want to be precautionary there. And then with David Durden, I think he just got the wind knocked out of him. He had a spectacular catch mm -hmm. uh, from Cooper Rush. It was like a 40-yard bomb down the field, and he it was a most athletic, one of the most athletic catches catches we've seen out here um, but he got hit pretty hard and uh, you know I think just landed wrong so I think he's he's fine as well but he's had a great camp he's a guy we haven't really talked a lot about he's had a great camp as well yeah and I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention at the top of the show that our Cowboys podcast text line is open so if you guys have any questions any players you want us to talk about you can text 817-290-3298 to give us all the questions, send them in. I will read them as our show continues on. Aisha, I'm going to go to you because Mozzie Smith obviously was drafted to shore up that run defense. How, what, what progress have you seen from him as far as the pass rush goes? Because that was kind of an area of improvement needed for Mozzie. Oh, yeah. So coming out of the draft, one of the biggest things that people were talking about was his stance, was his stance, his get off, how he gets off the ball. And you've seen him working with Coach Durday <laughs> um, to, to the sides, uh, Sharif Floyd working on that um, that initial explosion. But one thing I'm noticing for Mozzie and covering, you know, even covering the draft is he's a lot more of a raw player than what I think I initially thought. Like this gentleman still has to learn a lot of body control and technique. I mean, he's 
just brutally strong. But what the coaches are doing are trying to put all of that together. And so I think we're going to see him just slowly progress through the season. I think he's going to progress as the season goes on, as he gets more comfortable in that position. So um, love the improvement we've seen from him thus far because his first step is already improved from even a week ago with having that consistency with the coaches. Absolutely. Haley, as far as what we've seen, uh, padded practice, it got physical on Saturday. We saw a lot of really great catches, a lot of great glimpses. Something that I really wanted to go into were the highlights from Saturday because it was a lot going on. Not only was it Brandon Aubrey's first practice as the solo kicker on the roster, uh, Trayvon Diggs got three interceptions, Luke Schoonmaker got an increased workload. What was the one thing you really took out of Saturday's practice as they get ready to officially get into that preparation for the preseason game on Saturday? I think they're ready to play ball. <laughs> you know, like it, we're at that point of training camp where, the, you know, these guys have been hitting each other for weeks. Mike McCarthy has continued to emphasize that uh, the there was no need to do dual practices because they like the facility, they like the setup that they have here in terms of their uh, training program. But the reality is, is now this is week three of them going through installs and, you know, working against one another. Uh, they're jazzed up. They're, they're ready to play. It. And I think that this team has a lot to, to play for. Uh, and so you, you see that excitement. You see, you know, how eager they are. They're chomping at the bit. Micah Parsons has been literally begging <laughs> for weeks to hit somebody. So uh, I think they're excited. Um, there's obviously some things to still clean up. I know the run defense is still um, a work in progress with a lot of rookies, you know, still getting in the mix there. Um, run blocking is still something that Mike McCarthy is emphasizing, uh, but whether it's the offensive line shuffle or the tight ends getting used to their new roles. Um, so I think it's there's still some things they're working through, but I, I'm excited for them just to finally face some competition other than the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, yeah. And I, I think uh, it was DeMarvian Overshown, who, by the way, Haley, that story was incredible. It was really good. Amazing. If you guys haven't seen Haley's story on DeMarvian yet, please go watch it. It was probably one of my best, one of the my most favorite stories I've ever seen just within the Dallas Cowboys universe alone, but definitely one of my favorites from you as well. Uh, so setting the bar high, our queen. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Go check it out. It was really good. Um, as far as what I'm excited to see is, you know, going into this preseason or even this training camp, we were worried about the wide receiver core and where it was going to be, how it was going to look. And what a great problem to have that now we're talking about all these wide receiver names that we weren't even thinking about that weren't really on the radar now. So these rookies really stepping up and putting the pressure on the veterans to perform, not just in camp, but the ones that will get some snaps in the preseason. I really like this camaraderie that you have with this rookie class. I think it's a very strong rookie class. And even the undrafted guys are stepping up and making a name for themselves. So I'm really excited to see that. Aisha, Trayvon Diggs, three interceptions in one practice. What did, okay, did you get a chance to see the videos and what was working for him? Uh, basically, like, he was having a great day. I mean, obviously, at three interceptions. But what was the secret sauce that you noticed that was kind of in common with all of those interceptions throughout each video? Well, first of all, I think I think he, li 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 listen, well, God, you got to help out for a little bit. I think I think the third one was dropped, right, Haley? It well, and it a, wasn't just Dak Prescott. It the was, third, oh, the, it was late. So the third one, I actually, I uh, the third one was Leighton Vander Esch. He should have had four, is what the one you're the referring to. Um, yeah. He did have a pass that he that he could have picked off. He bobbled it, and it went out of the end zone. Mm. I almost got tackled along with one oh, of the uh, <laughs> don't local get television uh, cameras that were here. But he did he did finish the catch. Like okay. it didn't count obviously. He was out of bounds, but he did bobble, 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 complete the catch, like so he he did well. Okay. He okay. Did well, I wanted to make sure uh, before because I, I saw the different tweets about it. But yeah. Um one thing that I've noticed about Trayvon is that I don't know if y'all noticed, but him and Stefan Gilmore had on matching cleats the other day. And you know Stefan always has on mm -hmm. the, the red, you know, so I'm sure you yeah. she noticed. And I think you're seeing some of Stefan Gilmore's influence, man. Like, he is hip pocket with people, the aggressiveness. I mean, obviously, Trayvon was out with the toe injury for a little while or an irritation, but you could tell he was on fire. Like, he was ready to get back out there and establish himself. And it's really just 
fun to watch he and Dak go back and forth and how they battle with each other. But mm -hmm. one, the difference that I saw from him is just the aggression, just the and the physicalness. That's something that people mm -hmm. tried to knock from Trayvon last year was they didn't think he was physical. And I feel like early in this camp, you, you, he's established like, no, nah, I'm gonna come down and tackle too. You're gonna feel me, and that's a big deal. Aisha, we had Coach Ships uh, send us a message here on our podcast text line. He says, after seeing Trayvon come down with all of those interceptions this week, do you think he's ready to have another 10 plus interception season? Mm. I, Ladies, what do you think about this one? This is a pretty good question. Again, you guys can text our Cowboys podcast line at 817-290-3298. Send us all your questions. Haley, what you think? Trayvon, 10, 10 pick season? I think so. I think I think what's going to be uh, interesting about this Cowboys secondary, particularly with Trayvon and Stefan, is that a quarterback's going to have to choose, you know, pick their poison. My dad always says that, mm -hmm. pick your poison. And I think that there's no position really on this team that solidifies that phrase more than Trayvon or Stefan. So maybe not 10, uh, but I think only because you're you're splitting the targets this mm. season between two really, really, really established guys. So maybe Trayvon gets eight and Stefan gets seven, and that's 15 interceptions there from your two starting corners. Uh, it's not double digits, but it's also combined more, if that makes sense. No. So um, I'd like to see him get back to that point where he's getting double digits, but uh, I wouldn't be disappointed if he didn't because, to me, that's not a marker for Trayvon uh, this season because you're spreading the wealth. And also, you have somebody that is not so bland. You have Deron Bland, who's going to make a jump this season that I think also gets added into that mix as well for some potential interceptions there. Um, going back to the kicker situation, because last time we had talked, there was two kickers on the roster. Now there's one, and I believe you and Christy had a really good conversation about kicking. Christy came in with some really great stats. Yes. A really good episode there. Um, so... What I wanted to ask you guys was kind of how do you feel about Brandon Aubrey being the only kicker? And then it looks like we have a question on here as well. Uh, a fan from Long Beach, California says, how do you feel about the kicker going 11 for 11 the other day? So on Saturday, his first perfect practice, if you will, of training camp. Uh, Haley, you were there, and so you got to witness everything. And, and is there a different mentality or kind of a shift that you're seeing in Brandon Aubrey now that he's the only kicker there? I don't know if it's a shift in mentality. I think it's naturally a load off of his shoulders to a degree, only because you're not competing directly with another person at practice. You're not sharing snaps, so you know you are getting the brunt of the work. Uh, you're getting all of the work, in fact. Um, so I don't know that there's necessarily a change in mentality. I would argue that it might even be a little bit more difficult at this point because now it's literally just you and you're competing against yourself and you're trying to prove that you deserve the um, starting job going forward. Uh, but I don't, based on what I've seen, I haven't had a chance to talk to Aubrey yet just because the uh, specialists always leave the field early. Um, but I do have a story uh, potentially set up with him next week. Um, so I'm excited to get to know him a little bit better. But um, the reality is, is that it's hard to kick here in Oxnard. It's hard to kick for the Cowboys, especially over the last couple of years when we've seen what the kicking situation has turned into <laughs> every year. It's much more of a spectacle than we're used to seeing. Um, but I think you have to give him a chance. It's hard to say, you know, he's our guy, he's not the guy, he's this, because we haven't we haven't seen him yet. So I think Saturday's game will be a really great indicator of, of where he's at. I don't think it's necessarily a make-or-break game for him because it'll be his first game to play. Uh, but also, this is a seasoned guy. He was almost perfect in the USFL, 14 of 15, 35 straight uh, PATs made, uh, kickoffs, you name it. Um, so I'm just excited for him to just get the opportunity to soak it in, to be the Cowboys starting kicker on Saturday and work through whatever that looks like. I think one of the bigger questions now is how much of a grace period will he have when it comes to missing field goals, not just in the game scenario, but then heading back into practice. So that'll be something to keep an eye on because kind of in crunch time now, preseason officially just around the corner. So we're going to go ahead and end this segment coming up in the next one. We're going to give a little preview of your Cowboys offense heading into their first preseason game of the year. We'll be right back. This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation, so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. 
Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. If you've been thinking about weight loss surgery, My Bariatric Solutions has made it easier for you to schedule your initial consultation from the safety, comfort, and convenience of your own home. You'll meet one-on-one with the bariatric surgeon over a private and secure video call. You'll learn everything you need to know about the options available and which procedure is best for you. If you've been considering weight loss surgery and are ready to take the first step, call My Bariatric Solutions today at 844-326-6266. That's 844-326-6266 or go to mybariatricsolutions.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola a journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of you and everyone else absolutely loving new smoothie bowls from Smoothie King. And woo, me too. These smoothie bowls start with acai and pitaya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. New smoothie bowls, only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. We're going to get into more of your questions. We're talking Cowboys offense. But first, do you want to join the NFL's first and only high-energy co-ed dance team and drum, drum corp? Well, DCRB Drumline Auditions will take place at Next Step Dance at the Star in Frisco on August 27th at 2 p.m. For more information and to register, you can visit DallasCowboys.com slash DCRB. Love to see it. And if you want to text us any questions that you might be have any burning questions that are deep in your heart for us uh, Cowboys related that is you can text our Cowboys podcast text line at 817-290-3298 I feel like I am on Wheel of Fortune or something uh, when I read that number out but uh, (laughs) let's get into the Cowboys offense because you know, this has just been one of the most intriguing off seasons, I think, as far as this Cowboys offense goes. There's a lot of pressure on them to be better. There's a lot of pressure on them to really be that iron that sharpens the other half of the iron with the Cowboys defense. So let's start with, first of all, uh, Aisha, I'm going to go to you first, and then I'll defer back to Haley for this one. What players do you think will see the most playing time in this game? But I guess the question should be, what players need the playing time the most from what you've seen in camp? Tater tots. Um, no, I'm putting you on well, the spot. <laughs> well, I know. Well, I, I think a lot of people would agree that this offensive line and those backup guys are gentlemen that we want to see the second string guys. Um, Hoffman, Ball, Farniak, TJ Bass. I would like to see some of those gentlemen, and um, especially with Zach Martin's absence, it's going to be important to see what the options are there. Also, too, Chumye Doga, uh, well, let's go. These gentlemen, you know, um, will have the opportunity to get some competition against, against a, another team that's not your team that's been killing you in practice. I mean, I'm really excited to kind of see how these guys play um, with maybe not the same, it's going up against the same intensity as um, the Cowboys D-line brings to the table. So, and, and see how they fare. Well, let's go to Haley. Ah, see what I did there? I yeah. don't think you caught that one. I was. She's not about it. Haley, what players do you think need the most playing time? Or even just what position group do you think, other than the O-line, needs that playing time going into Saturday? Well, I just want to emphasize that on my notes for today's uh, thing that the first thing that I wrote down was the offensive line. Bless you. Yeah. We're on the same particularly page. Particularly the center <laughs> and uh, the right tackle. There you uh, just go. because I think that that's, there's the most uncertainty there, right? Yes, Especially uh, with Zach Martin still not reporting to camp. Uh, that's the most uncertainty. So I think that's the most interesting part there. Um, but you've also got a couple of battles elsewhere as far as players needing playing time. I'm really excited to see what Jalen Tolbert does. I mm. really hope that he gets a start out of this, him and Simi both, because 
I think um, it gives them a good opportunity to get the feel of that battle that we've been talking about um, all preseason. Uh, so I'm excited to see the wide receivers. Uh, Kevontae Turpin has been fantastic. I'm excited to see what he looks like um, as a receiver as well, not just returning balls. Um, and then another guy who I've um, had a chance to get to know in that wide receiver room who I'm actually very uh, surprised and excited about as well um, is Tyron Billy Johnson. Yes. Uh, and I added the Billy in there. He told there us earlier know. this week um, that he's adding Billy to his last name. When he grew up, uh, his last name was Billy. So we went by hmm. Tyron Billy. Um, and then later on, uh, he decided to switch to Johnson, which was his father's last name, I believe. I could have that backwards, but um, regardless, he's now shifting and he's doing the hyphen. So his name will be Tyron Billy Johnson on the roster. Um, but great guy, really athletic, very quietly fast. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think that whole wide receiver room uh, is going to look really well. Dennis Houston uh, is a guy who's mm -hmm. had another just stud camp. And when you talk to him, too, he's so laser focused yeah. um, on the task at hand that he doesn't even want to engage in small talk because he's so focused on making an impact on this team. So I'm really excited to see the wide receivers as well. But also, Jess, you mentioned in the first block we didn't get a chance to talk about him, but Luke Schoonmaker. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much playing time he'll get on Saturday just because he's still in what Mike McCarthy is referring to as the ramp-up period. Um, but he did take a, another step in his um, practice yesterday or day before. We just had a walk through yesterday. Um, John Stevens is a guy mm -hmm. who a lot of these people are high on. I spoke to Will Greer um, about it the other day, and he said he – he is the best athlete he's ever seen. And I didn't realize how tall John Stevens was. He's literally like, I feel like if I was standing on a stool, I still wouldn't be tall enough to look him <laughs> in the eye. So he's a very, very, very big guy. I'm excited just to see the offense kind of work through um, a lot of those position battles that we've been talking about. I'm trying to look up his height right now. He's 6'5", in case anybody at oh, home was six, wondering. Six. Oh, six, 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 six. There you go. That's that six, is six. That is a whole <laughs> yeah. and more than a foot taller than six, Aisha six. and I over yeah, here. Yeah, that is. Because <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> um, I think for me, what I'm excited to see is the confidence that's going to be built for some of these guys that already have had a fantastic camp. You talked about Jalen Tolbert, Jalen Brooks. Haley, your guy, he is just absolutely killing it uh, in camp. So to see that confidence boost that one good play can give these guys, DeMarvian Overshone, another really good example I can think of of a guy that one good play in camp boosts the rest of camp, and then, of course, getting that good play in a preseason environment can just do so much for them for the rest of this camp period. So for me, I'm excited to see kind of the tight end room. You guys know how I feel about this tight end room. I'm glad you brought up Schoonmaker. I'm excited to see him in action, of course. I don't expect it to be overly done, of course. I, I think uh, he's going to get very limited reps there, but Sean McKeon has had a great camp. We've talked about this over and over again. I'm excited to see what he can do in this real game time scenario now that he really has fortified his name as having one of the top camps uh, within this roster. And then I also think in terms of wide receivers, Cavante Turpin, I'm excited to see what he does as far as being in in the rotation of the offense. He's not just going to be that kick and punt returner that we're used to seeing. You get to see Cavante Turpin in a full force kind of action in that wide receiver core, something that we've been basically begging for uh, since last season. So I'm excited to see kind of where his spot lines up in the Cowboys offense. Is he going to be that red zone guy? Is he going to be the, the middle of the field guy? Is he going to be your third down guy? I think there's so many questions uh, that will be a, a little less foggy. I don't think they're going to show all their cards yet, but I'm excited to see all of that. Um, as we know, ladies, we're going to probably see the battle, and I say battle very lightly, of Cooper Rush and Will Greer. And from what we've seen, Cooper Rush has had a very great camp. He looks great. Will Greer, though, I want to focus in a little bit more on him. And Aisha, I'm going to go back to you for this first. What do you think he has to do to have a really good camp, uh, rest of camp, and then a really good preseason game when he gets those snaps? Oh, obviously. Absolutely. He just needs to perform. He just has to be, you know, in training camp in these these scenarios, you're looking for a consistency and you're looking for confidence. And so I want him to really put it out there um, because last year, you know, I was under the impression that he was ahead of uh, Cooper Rush in the running for for a quarterback too, but he had the injury, had the setback, and I think that kind of changed things. So I want to see him put not only put his athleticism on display because he is an athlete, but what I'm really looking for him to do is to throw with accuracy, be confident, and allow these receivers to make plays for him as well. 
There you go. Haley, I'm going to go back to you for this because we haven't talked about one very important position group yet. That's the running back room. Ooh, ooh. We haven't talked about this running back two comp a competition yet. Yep. Uh, and your boots on ground over there. Who has really stood out to you? I know Rico Dowdle has been getting a lot of praise from the coaches. Malik Davis, obviously, still looking really good. Deuce Vaughn uh, really becoming that media darling, if you will, for everybody. Mm. Uh, so who do you think, if you had to pick one, who do you think has the kind of tail end up, if you will, for this running for the RB2 room? Or spot, I should say. Um. I don't, I don't know that anyone does have a tail up necessarily. I mean, I know listed on the depth chart, Rico Dowdle is listed as the number two followed by Malik Davis, but I think that's only by design, if I had to guess. Um, I think both of them have had uh, a tremendous camp, and I don't, I couldn't say that one has had a better camp than the other because they kind of resemble one another. And so I think Mike McCarthy is just looking for who's going to take you know, the next step, who's going to take that next edge. You also have to remember Ronald Jones is still available as well. We might see him in the preseason. Obviously, he's suspended for the first two regular season games of the season. Uh, but Ronald Jones is still very much in the mix. I know he missed some time um, with a groin injury a couple uh, days ago. But uh, it, it's, it, it's interesting for sure. It, it's hard with this running back group because you're so used to seeing consistency at that position, and it's weird for us to, you know, be wondering who our second back is. Um, but it's also a good problem to have because you've got three really capable guys who can be that Mr. Reliable to come in behind Tony, and then you've got the secret weapon in, in our media darling, the people's choice, Deuce Vaughn. <laughs> um, and it's been really fun just to kind of see, you know, how he's leaned into that role a lot, uh, and he's embracing every part of being a running back. That includes blocking. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah. He's had some one-on-ones with people like Demarcus Lawrence, and even though he's not winning those battles, it's showing the effort. It's showing that he is willing to get down in the trenches despite his size you know and he may not always be successful at it but it's that willingness to do so I think that's what makes him so much more likable by both the fans and by the coaching staff because he's showing his versatility in that way um I did want to go back to Will Greer and the Cooper Rush conversation real yeah. quick because uh, me, myself, Kyle, and Isaiah will all be on the broadcast on Saturday. And so we had an opportunity to sit down uh, with both of those quarterbacks just to get some insight for the game. Um, and one of the things that I asked Will Greer was, you know, where he kind of sees himself in that quarterback room because obviously you've got Dak, the leader. You've got Cooper, you know, the, the backup who's really smart. Like, where does Will rank? And I loved his answer. He said, you know, I really am just bringing the vibes, which was a, it was a joke, right? But I, big vibes, people. But then he kind of went on to say, you know, like he kind of sees himself as being a mix of both of them. He said that he tries to emulate everything Dak Prescott does both on and off the field. He's really adopted, leaned into what Dak does and tries to be that guy in every aspect of his game. Uh, and then he said both he and Dak wish they would be as smart as Cooper Rush. Um, and so he's really just trying to find the balance of, you know, how can I be like Dak, but also be like Cooper, but also create a brand for myself. And so really looking into that on Saturday is what I'm most excited for, because I don't think there's a lack of confidence with Will Greer. He even told us, he said, there's no pressure on me. I'm just here to show them that I can be my alarms going off. Um, he just said, I can, I can be that guy when my name is called. And so the quarterback situation is interesting to me because it doesn't necessarily feel like a battle from our perspective or from the quarterback room itself. So uh, it's good that you have a group of three, like you talked about earlier, just the camaraderie that they all have, and that they're, they're still all three learning from one another. And doesn't it kind of seem like all good things come in threes on this team? I mean, you're talking about the group of three quarterbacks, the group of three <laughs> uh, running backs that you're really talking about, uh, tight ends, wide receivers, safeties, I mean, linebackers. You can go on and on with this beautiful group of three uh, trend within the rooms. What I really like about that for Will Greer is that's the smartest approach he can really take being in his position because being a sponge is so important when you have two guys that have a similar play style. They're not exactly the same with Cooper Rush and Dak Prescott, but you have two really smart guys and smart in very different aspects as far as being a quarterback, right? And so 
Uh, something that I think is so unique to Dak is he can personalize his approach with everybody on his offense. He knows how to talk to people. He has that personal side of things that make him that good leader. And then Cooper Rush, he is very smart. Sitting down to talk to him in the locker room, you will learn so much from Cooper Rush. And I'm not saying Dak isn't, right? You'll learn from, from both of them. Most of the time you have more time to talk to Cooper because no one's really flocking around him <laughs> uh, as much. But I really like that mm. approach by Will Greer. So, Haley, that's incredible. I can't wait to see uh, that work that you have there. Uh, Aisha, I'm going to defer to you because there was something ask. you wanted to say. I just, wanted, I just wanted to know, you can carry three quarterbacks now, right? Is it, was it, didn't they change that? Yep. Uh, so, so. Yep. so it's maybe, a new rule. Yep, new NFL rule. You can carry three. So to your point, Haley, I think that that, that new rule change takes some of that that pressure Ooh, off for that competition in that way because you know, hey, I'm going to have a chance mm -hmm. to be on this team. Yeah. And uh, so I, I just I just thought about that when you said that. I was like, oh, well, dang it. Like, that's fantastic a thing, too. Fantastic point. Um, yeah. So No, that's a fantastic point. And um, I think Will Greer, just being in this position that he is, is going to learn so, so much. And uh, whether he gets playing time or not, he's still going to be a viable backup to the backup absolutely you know no matter what so that's really cool uh to expect that somebody that we didn't touch a lot on but i want to kind of transition to special teams is Cavante turpin and we know that mike mccarthy said that Cavante's is not going to get those returner or punt reps because they already know what he can do we all know what Cavante turpin can do uh in that position already but that kind of leaves the competition for i call it the noah brown spot right because that backup punt returner uh role would be noah brown's and now that noah brown's no longer in Dallas, he's now with the Texans. That's kind of wide open. And so that's where Deuce Vaughn, Malik Davis, even Rico Dowdle could come into the mix. I really want to uh, ask you guys, Haley, I'll defer to you. Who do you think is going to get more of those touches? We'll go to Aisha after that. Uh, as far as the preseason game is concerned, I think they'll yeah. all share the wealth because you've got to be able to see who can do what. So I imagine Cavante will get the bulk of them, and then we'll see a lot of Deuce and a lot of Malik, and then we might even see, uh, you know, some random names thrown in the mix just to see who can do, uh, who can do what. But that's the beauty of the preseason is that you know it's not really these games don't count they're literally just for practice and that's what we keep trying to emphasize as well with with practice like Cowboys fans really like to panic whenever stuff isn't perfect and this is practice the only difference with these games is that it's just practice in a game setting so as much as we the hype we're creating about it being a preseason game the reality is is that it's still practice this doesn't count and there's going to be some things that are going to be a little bit different so I can't continue to emphasize that enough um, but yeah I think we'll share the wealth I think Kevante Turpin, Deuce Vaughn, you'll see a lot of Malik Davis, maybe some Rico Dowdle back there. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of Ronald Jones might even be back mm -hmm. there a little bit. It'll be uh, quite the variety of players. Love that. And uh, scream it from the mountaintops. You know what? We're going to go ahead and take our next break. Coming up, we're talking about the Cowboys defense and what we can expect from different position groups in their first preseason game. This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And we will be right back. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation, so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. If you've been thinking about weight loss surgery, My Bariatric Solutions has made it easier for you to schedule your initial consultation from the safety, comfort, and convenience of your own home. You'll meet one-on-one -on -one with a bariatric surgeon over a private and secure video call. You'll learn everything you need to know about the options available and which procedure is best for you. If you've been considering weight loss surgery and are ready to take the first step, call My Bariatric Solutions today at 844-326-6266. That's 844-326-6266 or go to mybariatricsolutions.com. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. 
Blockchain.com is one of the most trusted ways to buy, sell, and trade crypto. Whether you're always on the go or stay closer to home, Blockchain.com is just a few taps away. Put the power of crypto in your pocket so no matter where you are, you can trade on your terms and build a crypto portfolio to fit your life. For crypto pros, rookies, and anyone in between, Blockchain.com makes it easy to own a piece of the future. Blockchain.com. Trusted by millions. Trusted by America's team. Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back. Join us at the Miller Lighthouse at AT&T Stadium on October 7th and 8th for world-class barbecue from pitmasters across the country while enjoying live entertainment and liberations at QBBQ Fest Dallas. This October, the only thing hotter than the Dallas Cowboys, that's a good one, I like that, will be 30,000, oh my gosh, pounds of brisket, chicken, pulled pork, and ribs I smoking at Miller Lighthouse when some of the biggest names in BBQ come together at Q Barbecue Fest? Oh my goodness, guys, this is this is insane. I'm just reading this for the first time. <laughs> Tickets are now on sale at SeatGeek.com, the official ticketing provider of AT&T Stadium. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, I need to take a second to absorb what I just read. I also read. had the same reaction, Jess, <laughs> while you were, oh the reaction you had while reading that today is literally exactly how I read it I, on Monday. I was like, wait a minute, 70,000 <laughs> pounds of a barbecue? I couldn't believe what I was reading. Sign I thought I was reading up. it wrong, honestly. I'm like, that's why I shouldn't <laughs> stay awake until 2 a.m. watching Taylor Swift announce uh, 1989 Taylor's version. So incredibly texty. Uh, look, I'm really hungry, but I don't know if I'm like that hungry uh, right now now but also as a quick side note you can text us your questions at the Cowboys podcast text line at 817-290-3298 send us your questions in uh thank you very much ladies let's divert to the defense now um just incredible work by Dan Quinn can we start by giving Dan Quinn all the flowers in the world all the flower shops just like automatically deliver all your flowers to Dan Quinn please uh, we did get a question here and uh, whoever wants to take this question please feel free somebody texted us from an El Paso number so shout out to El Paso there uh, asking about a junior Fihoko update Haley do you have anything for junior have you heard about anything from him in, in Oxnard if not I know uh, uh, Aisha has some notes on him too yeah, I know he's been a little bit banged up. I want to say some kind of a shoulder uh, irritation that he's had. We get Mike McCarthy in about two hours, and so I'm sure that'll be a question that's asked at the press conference. Um, as far as I know, he's not worked in as much as some of the other guys, but that's not to say that he will not be a factor this season. I think he's just very similar to all these rookies, uh, just learning a little bit. But we'll probably get an update here in about two hours when Mike takes the podium. Perfect. What uh, have we seen from him so far? You said um, there was a couple glimpses. Um, any Anything you want to highlight? Yeah, I've quick? seen a couple of clips with him just kind of showing off that strength. Uh, they've moved him inside and outside a little bit. And then obviously he's been working to the side with uh, Coach Dirty and those gentlemen. But um, as Haley said, he is still in a process of coming back from that injury. Um, I think the preseason is going to be important for him as well as some other gentlemen on this defensive line. But um, yeah, he's, he's definitely a guy that is going to continue to grow as the season goes on. But the depth on this D-line is so so thick that I'm like I don't I don't know when we're gonna see him um, in a more of a bigger role yet. Yeah, that's fair. Um, let's talk about the interior of this D line. I was trying to think of a name to kind of mesh Mozzie Smith and Jonathan Hankins together, and I have Moz Hankins. So please, uh, because I just think it's such a force to be reckoned with. They deserve their own name as being like the power duo that they are within the trenches here at that nose position. <laughs> you don't like Moz Hankins? Haley, you got something better than Maz Hankins. Look, if y'all have something better, text me at that text line and, and we'll discuss. If you give me a couple minutes, yeah, I'll try and think of something, but Maz Hankins is not it. Like girl. Hank Maz. Look, they can text this Cowboys podcast text line at 817 Hank Maz is bad. 3298, and let me know if they have a better name for that. Uh, Haley, Mozzie Smith, he's somebody I that just I think know. They're both so big that they need their own. 
we'll Sorry, figure it. No, we'll figure it out. We'll I'm figure out a better Ma's name. <laughs> Hank Maz, they're both bad. It's so bad. <laughs> we'll figure something out, okay? <laughs> by by the start of the season, we'll figure something out. Um, Okay, so Mozzie's somebody that you got to talk to almost instantly as soon as he dropped down into Dallas. He's somebody that you've done a lot of work with. What have you noticed from Mozzie in this camp? And, you know, he said he wanted to go out and hit people, and that's exactly what he's done. What have you seen from him? Yeah, I think he's hard on himself. I, I didn't expect him to be, you know, we're all our biggest critics, so I'm not saying that I'm surprised that he's also his biggest critic, but it's different from Mozzie because he expects himself to be perfect, which is a blessing because you want your rookies to come in and want to strive for that greatness so that they can be the best contributors possible, but also um, giving himself a little bit of grace. You know, he's not going to figure it all out right away, and on Saturday it's not going to be perfect for him. Uh, so I think just the understanding of, like, he's just – just wants to be perfect at this, um, which, like I said, it's pros and cons to that. Um, but I think he's a competitor. Um, I think he's got like a quiet kind of confidence about him. I, he's not the loudest person on the D line, which, if you've seen those O line versus D line battles, you know that they get pretty noisy. Uh, he's not going to be the one that's up and yelling and in your face and, and doing a bunch of the trash talking, but he is going to get it done with his literal body of work. Um, so I think just continuing to build that confidence a little bit within him, continuing to, you know, develop that aggression. I've had several conversations uh, with uh, the assistant defensive line coach, Sharif Floyd, and um, he's also been quietly impressed with what Mozzie's been able to do just in this first couple of weeks of being a professional football player. Um, but again, it's just getting back to the basics, you know, taking care of his body the right way, making sure that he's going through every rep at full speed, but then also recognizing when, you know, you have a knee injury, taking a look at that, making sure it's nothing bigger than what it is so I think he's doing all the right things it's just continuing to get that experience continuing to build that confidence yeah and to your point Haley about you know him continue to develop and get better he he there has to be pressure as well you know to be the first round draft pick of the Cowboys and the fact that the Cowboys haven't went at that position that high in a very long time so um, him being hard on his stuff that's interesting to hear thank you for that you know that puts in perspective you know the person uh, he is but yeah I think he's going to continue to grow he's going to have the opportunity to and he has some of the best coaches in the NFL to help him out Absolutely. And so for time's sake, um, we have some questions about the linebacker room. Uh, people want to know, I wish I knew who this was sending this in, so I'm sorry I don't know your name, but they want to know, uh, will they play the strong side of linebacker knowing that there were issues in that spot for several years getting gashed in the run D on that side? So Aisha, I'm going to defer to you. Linebacker position, linebacker group, who are you kind of looking for to have a really – big preseason or, or kind of fortify who they are as a linebacker uh, in this preseason. Oh, yeah. I think um, listening to DeMarion Overshone's interview, he's ready to, to let loose and, and show his sideline, the sideline range that he plays with. Um, he has a lot of uh, he has a lot of grit and attitude to his game. We'll get to see that on special teams, but I know that we're going to get the opportunity to see him at the linebacker position. Also, too, Jabril Cox, this is a big year for him. Um, coming in. Um, Haley, I don't know if you've seen him at practice and if you saw anything good from him, but he seems a lot more decisive and uh, confident in his body, you mm. know, a, a year removed from that ACL and being in the system. Malik Jefferson is another guy that's been, you know, on this team for a while that we could see we could see um, in the preseason. And Devin Harper, another gentleman mm. that had an injury last year. I think he dealt with an Achilles. Um, he could be a guy that's uh, helpful on special teams, but you do want to see what he can give to you at the linebacker position as well so technically Isaiah Land from FAMU you know that's that's one of Haley's Haley's guys too like yeah. he's technically listed as an LB so I I mean he's a sack monster super edgy I'm really trying I'm really trying to see how he plays against some of these edges um, during this game as well I like the term sack monster that sounds really fun uh, but Haley, uh, for time's sake, is there any other position groups you wanted to make mention make mention of? Any other guys you want to talk about uh, before we wrap things up for the show? Yeah, everybody say it with me, Damone Clark. Damone Clark. <laughs> I uh, honest I to God, y'all, and I'm her. saying this oh, today is. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, okay, I missed it. I missed it. Uh, today you, girl. is Thursday. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. Listen, today's Thursday, August 10th. It's two days before the preseason, and I am here to tell y'all that Damone Clark will be an absolute monster for this team, not just this year, not just next year, but for years to come. And I know that we put a lot of emphasis on Micah Parsons and what he is able to bring to the table, and I'm not taking anything away from Micah Parsons. He will be one of the best players to ever wear a Cowboys jersey. But I'm here to tell you, August 10th at – 8.46 a.m. that Damone Clark will also be one of the best Come players on, to ever put on the Cowboys jersey because his dedication to the game, his dedication to getting better, his mentality, this is a guy who eats, sleeps, and breathes football. And when you see some of the hits that he's doing within the regulations now, mm -hmm. I can only imagine what he's going to look like this season. He has put on some weight, which is hard to believe because he's literally yeah. Superman walking around here. <laughs> um, and now he's the Hulk, so that's even more terrifying. Oh. Um, but it, it's so impressive how his attention to detail, how everything he always wants to do is football. Um, one of our PR staffs, uh, Scott Ogulniak, was telling us a story about Damone Clark last year coming to camp. And he said he sat behind Damone on the airplane and he could see like through the seat cracks, Damone Clark as a rookie, he wasn't even going to play because remember last year he was on NFI or on the injured list. He mm -hmm. wasn't going to get any reps. And he, even in that scenario, was sitting on the plane already watching film. And he watched <laughs> film from the moment they took off to the moment they got here. And Scott said, you don't have to watch film. Like, you can watch a movie. It's going to be all football for the next nine months. And Damone didn't care. He was watching film that whole flight, even though he wasn't going to get reps. And I just, I cannot speak highly and more highly about Damone Clark. So that's that is my player that we're we're rooting for this year. Oh, I love that. You Damone Clark and such in good Grant. insight. Thank you so much. <laughs> Aisha, same question. Anybody you wanted to make mention of before we wrap things up for the day? Mm, um, these corners and safeties, like there's some competition there as well. I'm really looking at Marquise Bell, Eric Scott, those gentlemen. Um, Nation Wright, uh, we talked about before. Is, That's he's right. Had a, he's had a steady camp as well. Like, um, I'm really looking forward to seeing these DBs, these young DBs, be able to. They've been flying around in practice. Want to see what they're able to do against some other competition. Um, because I think this is like the cuts and in, in the the depth chart in this situation is going to be hard. Like when you start getting yeah. into it, you got a lot of competition, and these gentlemen have really showed up. Thomas, these guys have played well during training camp. So um, the DBs in general. There you go. All right. Well, ladies, unfortunately, we are out of time for the day. We could go on and on and talk football all day, really, I think, if we if we could. But we can't do that. We will actually be back on next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. Haley, please have a safe ride back to uh, Dallas for Saturday's game. We're looking forward to seeing you on the sidelines, my girl. We're always rooting for you and we're cheering for you. We will be your biggest fan, and we're going to keep an eye out for all things we talked about here on today's episode. For Aisha and Jess here in the Star in Frisco, for Haley Sutton out in Oxnard, California, this has been Girls Talk, Boys Talk, and we will see you next week. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this,